the diplomatic row between India and Maldives was sparked after three deputy ministers made controversial remarks about the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, and Indians in general. One deputy minister went so far as to call Prime Minister Modi a clown and a puppet of Israel, leading to a tit-for-tat of calling of high commissioners by both governments and sparking this row between the two countries. The statements led to many social media users calling for the boycott of travel to Maldives. And this is important because since 2021, Indian nationals have made for the most number of arrivals to the island nation, or at least in the top two positions, if we look at the years 2021, 2022, and 2023. Staying this, Maldivian tour operators earlier yesterday put out multiple statements re-emphasizing the need for ties between New Delhi and Malé to be good, given the impact that Indian tourists have on the Maldivian economy. To make sense of this entire issue, we have with us today Safat Ahmed, a former spokesperson of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Maldives. Thank you for joining the print, ma'am. Thank you for having me. But to get right into this, my first question, sort of, you know, sticking to this tourism angle, Indians make up in 2023 the second largest nationality according to statistics released by the Maldivian Tourism Ministry in the number of arrivals in Maldives, with roughly about 1,83,000 Indians still November 2023 traveling to the island nation. Right? Since the COVID pandemic, India in 2021 had almost 3 lakh tourists visiting the island nation about 2,40,000 in 2022 and now about a lakh in 83 in 2023 as per data published so far right so in that sense what impact has these remarks made by these three deputy ministers on the larger indian maldivian economic cooperation with special emphasis to tourism well, um, as you have uh, highlighted that, um, you know, this is a tourism uh, related diplomatic feud between India and the Maldives that have escalated uh, this week. And this dispute stemmed uh, from derogatory comments made by three of our deputy ministers about India's prime minister, His Excellency uh, Narendra Modi. Now, uh, we must understand that India and Maldives have shared uh, close and cordial relations for over 60 years. And as you have mentioned, India topped the Maldives tourist arrival figures last year. Uh, and and uh, I believe it has been uh, going on uh, over the past three years. And as per the figures that have been shared by the uh, tourist industries, the tourism industry and the experts, India holds about an 11% of market share of tourist arrivals to the Maldives. So facing a boycott from our biggest sources of tourism income will definitely have adverse impacts on our economy. And if we look at it in, uh, in one way or the other, this situation is uh, a bit surreal for many of the Maldivians, disappointingly rather, uh, because Maldives' economy is very heavily dependent on tourism. And the dependence on tourism makes our economy very uh, vulnerable to macroeconomic uh, and external shocks. So tourism is, is the lifeblood of uh, Maldivians and it contributes to two thirds of our GDP. Maldivians happily promote our tourism industry. So this situation is very surreal uh, in the sense that we have never witnessed uh, a spate of bookings uh, being canceled by Indian tourists. We have never seen Indian celebrities and prominent figures from India calling for boycott from Maldives because Maldivian people have a lot of respect for, for the Indian people and Maldivian people uh, really love Indian celebrities. We we love to watch Bollywood movies. We love to travel India as well. And it's a very, uh, you know, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a unique relationship that is built on mutual trust and, and that is built on mutual benefit. And it's not just the government to government ties. It's also the people to people connect. So, so without a doubt, there'll be adverse impacts and severe repercussions on our economy uh, 
which comes um, you know from an economic angle as well as uh, as well as from a people to people angle due to the you know social media uh, you know engagements that are coming between Maldivians and and Indian people. I would like to also just add that you know uh, uh, first of all, on behalf of our people, I really apologize for these derogatory comments made against India's Prime Minister, His Excellency Narendra Modi. We respect India's Prime Minister. We respect all heads of states. We respect Indian, the Indian people. And we we would very much love and we would very much want to uphold this relationship with India. And, and I want to tell to the Indian people, please keep coming to the Maldives. We very much welcome you. And this in no way represents the sentiments of the Maldivian people. Right, ma'am. And I just I just want to take this conversation a bit further because uh, Maldives had recently had its general elections with a new president being elected and President Moizu has made it clear through his campaign uh, of the stilt towards China. In fact, after he you know took over the presidency, his first visit was to Turkey and then UAE for COP. And now he's in China uh, as we speak. Right. So in that sense... Uh, what significance does these choices by the president of Maldives have on the larger geopolitical relationship, like you said, that has existed for 60 years between India and the, the Republic of Maldives, right? So in that sense, these choices by the president of Maldives, what, what significance does that have, ma'am? Um, uh, in uh, diplomatic terms, a state visit is considered the highest uh, expression of a friendly bilateral relationship. Since Maldives has elected our first uh, democratically elected president, all of our presidents have visited India first after assuming uh, the office of Maldives' uh, presidency. So, um, however, in the case of our current president, he opted to visit Turkey and then the UAE for COP, and then China. Um, the president is still yet to visit India and has visited uh, China prior to India. Uh, during our president's uh, remarks uh, within one of the engagements uh, during his visit to China, he emphasized the prominence of his visit to China as it was his first state visit to a foreign nation. He uh, is the first president of the Maldives who has visited uh, to China as the first state visit. And our president, uh, Moise, also spoke on the long-standing relationship between the Maldives and China, which dates back to the ancient maritime Silk Road. He also uh, mentioned that China remains uh, one of our closest allies and development partners. And he also uh, reaffirmed a commitment to uh, revive the BRI, and uh, which includes the expansion of our country's central airport and the commercial port. So all of these, um, you know, engagements uh, clearly indicate that the Maldives is moving closer to a pro uh, pro China foreign um, policy. However. The Maldives and India have enjoyed uh, diplomatic relations for as long as the Maldives have been independent. So we both have to work together for the peace and development of the Indian Ocean. We share uh, the waves of the Indian Ocean, the ocean that connects us, the, that connects our two countries together. And India has uh, all always been our dear friend, our partner in development, the first to respond to every crisis. Our relationship is built um, on many years of trust, trust and uh, friendship, like I mentioned, it goes beyond conventional diplomacy. It's people to people contact and the Maldivian people will always cherish this relationship, will continue to uphold this relationship. So I urge uh, the Maldivian government to recall the historic and the traditionally close and friendly relations with India and to nurture and strengthen our relationship with India and our neighboring countries. I also call upon the government of the Maldives to also host bilateral discussions in an amicable atmosphere, in an atmosphere of friendship with India, in, in, in a warmth and close uh, understanding with India. And it's very important that we, that we further strengthen our bilateral cooperation with India in a wide range of areas for the peace and stability of the Indian Ocean. 
Right, ma'am. And, and like you rightly mentioned, uh, Justin Moizu, in, uh, in one of his engagements in China, spoke about the Biyadai and this you know, ancient maritime silk route uh, and, and these ancient ties, right? But the previous president uh, from 2013 to 18, President Abdullah Yamin as well, had you know, cultivated close ties with China uh, in his five years. And according to estimates uh, by various research organizations, one being Aid Data, uh, you know, in those five years of uh, the Yamin years, Maldives and China's economic ties saw close to a billion plus dollars in aid being lent to Maldives, right? And and according to Aid Data from two thousand. Three, if you look at it, the total amount that China lent is about $2.1 billion to Maldives, specifically the highest point being about $791 million in 2017, if I remember correctly, during Yamin's years. Right. So this tilt that President Moizu is having towards China and calling for the BRI, calling for more Chinese aid, how does that, you know, when we look at the realities of the Maldivian economy, how does more Chinese money being lent sort of play to the larger macroeconomic stability of the Maldivian economy? Yes, um, when we look at uh, our debt figures, China is the Maldives' uh, biggest bilateral creditor. And the World Bank has also warned the Maldives in further um, in further undertaking debt with China, which could spell trouble for our country, since our current debt to China represents around twenty percent of our public debt. And during uh, President Yamin's regime, uh, this was also one of the major concern, because uh, I mean the major concern was the China's debt trap. Uh, diplomacy. And in the last um, decade, Maldives' external debt uh, to GDP ratio, external debt to GDP ratio has skyrocketed. And this indicates our growing susceptibility to debt threats. Um, so sovereign uh, guaranteed debt implies uh, debt which has the irrevocable and unconditional guarantee of the government. Um, so, for example, the China Development Bank and the Industrial and Commercial Bank of China and the Export Import Bank of China hold over 60% of Maldives' sovereign debt. So we can imagine uh, the repercussions uh, that can stem from that and how much will be uh, susceptible uh, to debt, uh, to a debt trap from, um, from a country like China, which is very detrimental to our economy. This results in an excessive amount of interest due to Chinese lenders and increase in Maldives' credit uh, from China. Um, in the recent visit by the government of the Maldives to China, uh, there have been talks about uh, fostering a further economic collaboration by reviving the FTA as well. Um, which can lead to an unimaginable amount of debt levels. We we don't know how much the debt levels will skyrocket uh, from such an uh, FTA because it's it's an infamous uh, debt trap diplomacy that can cause uh, Maldives to succumb to uh, China's penetration to our country. So it's very important that the Maldivian government thoroughly investigate the clauses of this F FTA and analyze in depth the possible implications for for our economy and for the Indian region. Right, ma'am. And, and I just want to sort of pivot here back uh, to something that began in 2020 in Maldives, and this was that India Out campaign. Uh, and one of the main reasons or one of the main calls, clarion calls uh, of President Moizu campaign when he became a candidate last August was the promise of removing Indian troops from Maldives. But to the best of my knowledge, uh, there were training helicopters and I think a Dornier aircraft, all of which had agreements signed with the government of Maldives and associated personnel for the same. But one of his first actions was to say, I have spoken to the government of India to remove their troops. So as someone who, you know, has been with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, especially for uh, during President Soli's years, 
could you just for the benefit of our viewers break down this agreements what does this actually indicate what what does these training helicopters these aircraft what was the can you sort of make sense of that for us ma'am uh, President Moise's campaign was run on an India out plank and right after winning the presidency, he requested India to remove Indian troops from our country. And even uh, during his um, uh, meeting with uh, Prime Minister Modi on the sidelines of, uh, of the recent COP, uh, he, uh, after his meeting with uh, Prime Minister Modi, uh, President Moise also announced that India will be removing uh, the Indian uh, military personnel, some 75 personnel in, in the Maldives. Now, <clears throat> looking back into President Saul's administration, our foreign policy was uh, oriented towards India, India as a provider of um, economic benefits and security. We must understand that India is a strategic ally with a very small uh, Indian uh, military presence of some 75 personnel, which was disclosed itself by President Saul's administration itself. But there were huge disinformation surrounding this subject and activists uh, who were uh, the opposition activists at that time, kept claiming that there were thousands of uh, military personnel. Uh, we also must understand that, that the scope of the Indian uh, maritime security assistance to the Maldives is very uh, considerable and Maldives uh, should uh, pursue uh, uh, such uh, efficient security arrangements with India because we have a maritime jurisdiction of archipelago waters uh, of more than 900,000 uh, square kilometers. So to properly govern um, to properly govern this uh, maritime space is very well beyond our capabilities as a small island state with very limited uh, resources. And when we look at the 75 personnel that is, uh, that is based in the Maldives, uh, they have been based in the Maldives for over a decade. And they they are they are unarmed. They do not have any weapons. They mostly assist the Maldive the Maldives and the Maldivian uh, you know government uh, with uh, search and evacuation operations with medical evacuation operations. So this uh, whole situation is uh, taken out of uh, context. Uh, one must really understand what are the bilateral agreements that we have. Uh, with India, and that uh, that no matter what the people are alleging and the disinformation that are being spread, the Indian military personnel that are stationed for more than a decade uh, are, have been stationed with the government permission under uh, bilateral agreements and MOUs that have been signed uh, with India. They are unarmed, without any weapons, and they're engaged in humanitarian and uh, capacity building uh, initiatives. Um, I also want to add that uh, Maldives respects the sovereignty of India and likewise India immensely respects the sovereignty of India. So the technical uh, team uh, that that are based here for flying the two helicopters and the one Dornier are with the government permission. They are uh, five super specialist doctor. There are five super specialist doctors in our uh, Senehia Hospital with uh, government uh, permission, and the Indian Dornier uh, aircraft and the two helicopters are run with MNDF, our military air wing which has saved uh, many lives through medical evacuations from all across Maldives, even in the most extreme um, weather, weather conditions. And if you may allow me, I, I would just like to uh, highlight some statistics. For example, for example, the medical evacuations and the special operations trainings uh, from January 2019 up until late 2023, uh, mm -hmm. has resulted in saving 495 precious lives, which have been saved by medical evacuations, and 50 joint and search rescue missions have been conducted uh, by, uh, through these uh, engagements. So we must understand the depth of uh, uh, our security engagements with India, India which is uh, highly beneficial because India is our uh, perfect neighbor, neighbor, our strategic ally, and and these uh, engagements engage in 
humanitarian and capacity building initiatives which really aid in India. And the scope of the Indian maritime security assistance to the Maldives is very considerable. So I urge the government to review these, these bilateral agreements and to further uh, you know, engage with India in, in bilateral talks in a very amicable uh, manner. Right, ma'am. Uh, that was my final question. And uh, once again, thank you so much for joining the print and having this conversation that covers China, Maldives, India, Maldivian ties, as well as uh, uh, Maldivian domestic politics. Uh, thank you again for joining us, ma'am. Thank you very much for having me.